The steel shipping drum was invented in the late 19th century for the oil industry, which needed an alternative to leaky wooden barrels. But those first steel drums also leaked from their soldered seams. Welding them proved to be the solution, giving this container an airtight reputation. It's a product that really delivers the goods. To make steel shipping drums, a punch press cuts and forms the bottoms in one swoop. A conveyor shuttles the bottoms down the line to a turntable. As it rotates on the turntable, a nozzle sprays sealant onto it, coating it completely. They stack up the drum bottoms. Meanwhile, another punch press shapes steel discs into tops for the drums. Rollers turn up the outer edge to a precise measurement. Next, steel fittings tumble down a vibratory conveyor to a machine that simultaneously punches threaded openings in the tops and inserts the fittings. One hole is for opening and closing the drum, while the other is to vent. At this station, they check the thickness of sheet steel that will be used for the body of the drum. The thickness varies depending on what the container is to hold. A machine called a shear slices the coiled steel into sheets. The steel sheets then move on to a forming machine, where rollers curl them into a tubular shape that is the drum's shell. Automated pushers then move each shell through an electric resistance welder. It generates heat to weld the side seam, bonding it from both the inside and the outside so it won't leak. The shells roll down to a machine called a flanger. The flanger stretches and presses on the outer rims at both ends, creating a lip. Then it's over to a machine called a beater. Its rollers bear down on the shells to make grooves called rolling hoops. These rolling hoops add rigidity to the shells. The shells now travel down another conveyor and merge with the drum tops. Automated pushers deliver a top to the base of a shell. The shell rotates in a spinning clamp as rollers curl the edges of top and shell together. This creates an interlocked seam called a chime. Another roller then flattens the chime. Mechanized arms flip the shells so the bottoms can now be installed. To join the bottoms to the shells, rollers form another chime. These interlocking seams are comprised of seven layers of steel, making them leak-proof. That's critical, since the steel drums may be used to transport hazardous goods. The steel drums now move forward to a testing station. Here, they inject air into each drum and check the seams for leaks. The seams have been soaked up, so if bubbles materialize, it signifies a problem. The steel drums then go for a whirl under the paint gun. It sprays them with enamel paint as they rotate, giving them a protective sheen. Black is the most common color for these shipping containers, but custom colors are sometimes ordered. The steel drums then journey through an oven to bake the paint to a hard finish. They then gauge the thickness of the paint with a special tool to confirm that it's thick enough to withstand rusting. They plug both openings and put a temporary seal on the vent to prevent tampering. After that, these steel shipping drums are ready for the long haul.